we're now going to graph exponential functions. And we're going to do this with a very simple exponential function, and then we're going to develop our pattern, and then we're going to go from there. So remember that f of x equals a to the x is our most simple one, and we're going to expand on that for transformational form and make this k plus a to the x minus h. So notice that this is all in the power, and that this is being added after or before, but order of adding doesn't matter. But I want to write it there just so that it's not accidentally assumed to be part of the exponential. The book actually writes it as a to the x minus h plus k. And so we're going to start with a very, very, very simple example. Suppose we start with f of x equals 2 to the x. And so we're going to point plot, and we're going to pick for x minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. So we get 2 to the minus 2, which is 1 fourth, because the negative turns into a fraction, 2 squared is 4. 2 to the minus 1, which is 1 half. 2 to the 0, which is 1, 2 to the first, which is 2, and 2 squared, which is 4. And so our basic graph has a point here at 0, 1. And if we come over 1, we go up 2. If we come over 2, we go up 4. If we go back 1, it goes to a half, and, if it, and it keeps going down. So we get really, 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 really close to the x-axis, and then once we pass the x equals 0, it rises very quickly. So a couple of things to point out. First, our domain is, in fact, minus infinity to infinity. Our range, though, appears to be coming from this line right here. It's really, really, really close to 0, but it never actually gets there, because even 2 to the minus 100 is still 1 over 2 to the 100, which, despite being a very small number, still isn't 0. And so it's 0 to infinity. And so there's our domain and our range, and we call this line that it almost gets to, this is the asymptote. The other important thing to recognize here is that we're referencing this zero point, and we're referencing everything from zero, zero. This is our reference. Well, our pattern is built off of the following points. The minus one, the zero, and the one. So our reference point, or our pattern points, are from some reference, are always minus 1, 1 over a, 0, 1, and 1a, where a is the base of the polynomial function. So first we find where our reference is, then we find our pattern, and we draw our points. So let's look at another example. Suppose g of x is equal to 1 half to the x. Well, since we're not adding anything up top and we're not adding anything after, our reference point is at 0, 0. So if nothing's written, our reference is 0, 0. We then know that our pattern is off of this 1 half, so it's minus 1, take the reciprocal, 2, 0, 1, and 1, 1 half. So when we go to draw, we draw on our first lines and we reference, we li list our reference point, and then we go back 1, up 2, straight up 1, over 1, and up a half. And then we just draw our curve to be a 1 to 1 curve until it hits the line, and then it just follows it out. Again, our domain is still minus infinity to infinity. And our range goes from 0 to infinity since it's going up. I want to show one example with the transformation now, just to show this idea. Suppose that h of x is equal to 2 to the x minus 1 minus 3. So our first step is to identify our h and our k. And our h comes from taking this and changing its sign. And our k comes from the piece on, on the same base level and keeping the sign the same. So we go to 1 minus 3. That's our reference point. Our pattern points are then built off of the 2. So we're at 1 reciprocal, minus 1 reciprocal, 0, 1, and 1 whatever a is, 2. So when we graph, the easiest way to do this is to move over 1, down 3, and put an x. And now we're going to draw in a new axis going through that point. We then pick graph our points as if this were 0, 0. So we're going to go up 1, 
over one and up two and back one and up a half. And we draw our line in. So we took our f of x equals two to the x graph and we moved it one to the right and three down to get our new graph. And that's how we graph exponential functions.